Okay, so I'm going to help you get your computer set up to run some code. So the code we're going to run is going to be written in Python. In this video, we're going to install Python on a Mac, and we're going to learn about how to install packages for our Python installation. And a package is just something that contains useful code that other people have written that you get to use in your own projects. So to install Python, we're going to use something called Miniconda. We type miniconda install, search for that, go to quick install. This is for a Mac. If you have Windows, you can follow the instructions here or on Linux here. We'll use OS X miniconda here since we're on the Mac. And first we have to download a script. We'll get this one, Mac OS X Python 3.6. So we'll click that, get a script. Now to run that, we need to use something called the terminal. So to open that up, you hold command and tap space. To get the terminal, you just start typing terminal, and you can see it found it. We can hit return, and now we have a terminal open. Now what you see here is the name of your computer, your current location, this tilde is short for your home folder, and then you see the name of the user that's currently logged in, and the dollar sign, and that's kind of your prompt where you can type commands here. So to run that script we downloaded, we'll type cd space tilde forward slash down tab to get autocomplete there. So now we're in our downloads folder. To run that script, we type bash space mini tab to autocomplete that, hit return. We'll follow these instructions, return space bar a couple times. We're reading all that, we approve, sure. Hit yes, enter, so we'll type yes, hit return. Okay, so now we have it installed. To have access to the command which will allow us to create an environment which we can then install Python into, we have to actually open another terminal window. So we'll close this one and we'll go up here, new window here. So we have a new window. Now, before we create this environment, it's gonna create it wherever we are. So I'm in my home folder here. And I see the tilde is short for the home folder. So I'll just type conda create dash n, we'll call it nn series, and we'll use Python in there. So let's break this command down. We're gonna run something using conda. It's gonna create a new environment. This is where Python will be installed and all the packages that we install alongside it will go. Dash n is just short for new. This is the name of the environment, and this says we wanna use Python in it. We'll hit return, and we'll let that all install. Yes. Here we type a Y, hit return. Okay, so that's finished. To actually activate the environment, you see we have a useful little hint here to activate the environment, type source, activate, and then series. So I clear the screen by holding command and then tapping K, uh, and that just gets rid of some of the clutter up top. So now we have our environment activated. We can install some useful packages in it. So one of those is called NumPy. So to install that, we type conda install numpy, hit return. Uh, to install that, we just type y, hit return. And numpy has useful stuff in it. It has arrays, which are just groups of things. So if we wanted a whole list of numbers, we could use an array of numbers. Uh, it has matrices, which are two-dimensional arrays. Really, it's groups of groups of something. It has n-dimensional arrays, so you have groups of groups of groups of groups of stuff, or however many dimensions you want in there. Uh, and it has random number generators, all this other useful stuff. So we're going to install NumPy right now just to have it for the future. And one other one that I use a lot and which we'll be using in the following videos is called Jupyter Notebook. So to install that, we'll do the same command, conda install Jupyter this time. We'll say yes. Now Jupyter Notebook lets you experiment as you run your Python code. You can type it into cells and run each cell individually. And it's kind of a nice interactive way to play around with Python. So we'll let that install. Okay, so now we have Jupyter Notebook installed. To use it, we just type the command Jupyter Notebook. Not very creative there, which is good because it's easy to guess. If we run this command, it's going to be executed in this directory we are right now. So this is our home directory. We'll run it. 
and it opens up a tab in our browser which is kind of interesting and these are the folders that are in my home directory I want to make this notebook on the desktop though so I'll just click desktop now to create a new notebook we go to new over here and Python 3 okay so here we have Jupyter notebook opened now what is it it's an open source project for data science and scientific computing. What does that mean? Well, to me, I just use it as an interactive way to run Python code. So we can click in this cell here and write some code. Let's start with one plus two. To run it, we hold shift and tap return. And you see we get an output of three. So it's really handy. I can run some code and see an immediate response, an immediate feedback. So one plus two is three. We can do multiplication, two times five, shift, return, that's 10. We can raise things to a power, so three, well, let's do two to the eighth power, hold shift, tap return, we get 256. So this is kind of like a really powerful calculator right now. Let's do something more Python-y. Let's define a variable. So to define a variable, we come up with a variable name, let's call it x x equals we write this equals sign and then a six we hold shift and tap return and now we have a variable whose value is equal to six so if i want to see what the value of x is i can type x hold shift tap return and you can see it is equal to six so that's how you make your own variable it doesn't have to just be a number you can have strings as well which are it's just text so if i want to say my variable is called name I can assign it the value of John that is some text inside of quotes these two little they're really apostrophes you can use apostrophes or you can use quotes like that to run it shift tap return to see what name is equal to I think we know what it is but let's see it we can hold shift tap return and it is equal to John so variables can be anything. They could be an object, they can be text, they can be a number. So that's how you define variables. Let's look at how you'd make your own functions. So to define a function, you use the three letters DEF, then the function name, like double, and the name of an input, so X, and then a colon, hit return, Jupyter adds four spaces for us, which are important for Python to know that we're defining the body of this function. Now we'll type return two times x. I have to hold shift, tap return to run this Python code. Now this function is available to us in any of these other cells. Let's just use this cell down here. We can type double, and then 10, give it an input, 10, shift return to run that, 20. So the way this works is we've defined a function called double. It takes one input called x and it returns in place where we write the function, it returns this expression evaluated. So we give it an input of 10, x is going to be replaced with a 10 inside of this expression. So we'll have 2 times 10, which is 20, and then that will be returned where we've written the function. So to prove that, let's just write double of four, but this time let's assign the output of this function into a variable. So y is equal to double of four. And if you read it, it just makes sense what that's gonna do. You know, y is equal to double of four. Well, what is y equal to eight? So that's how we define our own function. Let's look at how to use functions defined by other people. After we installed Miniconda, we installed a package into our environment called NumPy. And to use NumPy, we type import. You can hit tab and it will show you, you know, possible things you may be wanting to type. So NumPy, hit return to confirm that, shift, return. And now we have access to the NumPy package. So to see what's in it, we can type NumPy, then a dot, this dot notation is kind of like we're looking inside this package, we're unboxing it in a way. Uh, and to see everything, Jupyter has a great feature as well where we can tap tab and we see all the available methods in here. So I see one up here at the top called add. 
So we can start typing and it will filter it down for us. So add, we put parentheses to call this function. This takes two inputs. Let's try three and seven. Shift return, we get a 10. There's another cool one in NumPy called binary representation. So this is one that takes a number, 231, let's try, and it gives us back a string. So if I hold shift, tap return to run this, that is the actual binary representation of 231. Let's prove it and take one off of there, and this should go to a zero here. Okay, yeah, so that is the binary representation of the number 230 now. So that's how you run code written by other people. It's in stuff called packages. You import the package, and then you can run these methods in your own scripts. So in the next videos, we'll look at how to define our neural network function, get some random weights, give it some data from our farmer's flower data set, and see it give us back these wrong random answers. And then in the videos after that, we'll see how we can actually update the weights of our neural network to get the predictions that we want. So hit subscribe so you don't miss those. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if it wasn't helpful. Any feedback at all. I really appreciated the comments on the first videos. Those were really encouraging. So I'm looking forward to more of those. And a kind of a discussion in the comments would be nice. I'm here to help. Uh, if this stuff doesn't install correctly or if it doesn't make sense, just let me know. And I'll address it in later videos or just in the comments. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.